and then just target Kraya and attack. Find the lightsabers while cool is gonna wreck you in this stage. Watch your health. I'm on it. All right. Yeah, this is much better. Da, da, da. Yep. Okay. There we go. Those are the hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. It's gonna be close, but I think we can do it. Come the fuck on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get a good swing in. Get a good swing in. Yay! Yes. Cutlass Fury. It is done. You are greater than any I have ever trained. By killing me here. You have rewarded me more than you can possibly know. Okay, there's still time to save you. You left me no choice. I've defeated you. You're no longer my master. My path is my own. Proud words. Now die, Def old woman. Do not do that one. Yeah. I would recommend the top one for this particular thing, because there is more conversation to be had. I certainly hope so. Save me. You already have. It is enough what you have done. From now into the future. What happens now? So just rest now ends this. So just letting you know. Yeah. No, what do you what do you mean? It is your choice. I had hoped you would follow Revan's path, but you and Revan are different, and your path is your own. You may take one of the ships that orbit Malakor and depart this place, or you may remain here on Malakor and wait for the others, those touched by the force. Who will come in time. Or you may return to your exile, where your presence will no longer affect the actions of others. There is no dishonor in any of these choices. I only ask that you make the choice without regret. I will follow Revan as I did a decade ago. I no longer want to be here. One of my friends, you spoke of the future. I will choose later, but for now, rest. Okay. Um, she's. Um, you're laying it out. It's okay, we can we can go ahead up. We can just skip right to three and just keep asking yeah, questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, no. yeah, 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 yeah what yeah. are you talking about? What, what about what them? my friends? What about them? Many things do I see as I gaze here from the heart of Malakor. This place channels such energies. If it matters to you at this last moment, I shall look into the future and tell you of what I see. It is my last gift to you, from one exile to another. What okay. happens to my friends? For my allies, I would see the future, the future of the galaxy. Also, we should click on that too at some point. Yep, okay. yep. No, she like there was. I yep. saw there was a line that was like you can keep going back to like you talked about the future. Um, answer the question, please. Ooh. You travel with them for so long, yet you do not know them still. Feel them through the Force, feel what they feel, hear their thoughts and know them, as I fought to know you. They were the lost Jedi, you know. The true Jedi, upon which the future will be built. They simply needed a leader and a teacher. The lost Jedi. The real Jedi, the true Jedi. I guess mm -hmm. he just means in ideology and in their character. Um, Top down? Yep. 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 Tell me about what's her face. Who? She will stop hunting life and instead live it. She was not born to be a predator, despite her true father and the life she led within the shadow of Narshadar. She will miss you and think of you often. You who awakened her to what life is. She will live, but only for a time. Her death will occur in many years' time on a forgotten planet, saving the lives of others. But it will be her choice, and she will have no regrets. You know, the magic of what you can do within the 14-month constra constra constraint? Mm-hmm. Of like being like, so what are the endings? And she's like, oh, I'll just tell you. Yep. <laughs> I, I can read what the happens to, What happens to I my will, companions? I will literally just talk the endings at you. Yep, yep, here you go. We can't afford to show you a render, so you're going to Here's gonna the have... epilogue. Here is the epilogue. Fine. And that's why we start with number one, because it's going down the whole party. And what about Candelore? Mm-hmm.
Many battles does that one have left. Yay! As Revan intended, a general needs an army as he needs those he trusts. And Candorus is a loyal beast, no matter how much he is broken upon Revan's will. But you know this. And you know this, men? What about the, the people? Me yeah, what about them? They will die a death that will last millennia until all that remains is their code, their history, and in the end, the shell of their armor upon the shell of a man too easily slain by Jesus. <laughs> I wonder who she's fucking talking about. I wonder what kind of a fucking call out was that. Oh, damn. Ooh. Oh, wow. Oh, there's more of that. Wow. Just you fucking wait. Body. Mm. Body. Called <laughs> out. Oh, no. Fucking F's in the chat, boys. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Oof. Damn, she could not have possibly known about the show The Mandalorian. No. <laughs> what a great show. <laughs> it was a good time. <laughs> Oof. Oof, It didn't indeed. have to end with the fucking, with the bad times. Mm-hmm. All right. What about Bay? Mm-hmm. What about her? The blinded one shall return to her home world. And as she looked upon you, she shall look upon the surface of that world and perhaps at last see what she was meant to see. After that, I do not know. I do know that you must leave her behind. Where you are destined, you must not take anyone you love. It was Revan's choice as well. What does that even mean? She's going back there for what? Okay, so I've been kind of talking around it, but... Qatar is a Maraluka colony. Not their homeworld. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So there's more. Mm-hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Hmm. I mean, I guess that would explain why they're a race in the future that, mm -hmm. that can be yes. picked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I do say colony a couple times, sure. but, you know. Okay. Yeah. They, she still has a homeworld. Uh, and what about Punch Girl? Best girl, really. Al almost Bay, but not not Bay. Not allowed because of the writing. Cut fourteen months. Couldn't be Bay. Couldn't be before all others. Mm -mm. No. All if else. If she leaves this place, she will leave battle behind her, in no small part due to your influence. She will take Atrus's role as historian, and teach others of the Jedi exile. Who gave up the force and became stronger for it. Boo! That's not great. She's gonna hang up the gloves? Boo! Yep. That's not at all That's, what I wanted hmm. for Handmaiden. I wanted more battles. Well, you know, I more guess. More punch girls. I mean, yeah, but, well, whatever. No punch! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the. She becomes a librarian. Aww. Well, you know. Okay. What about at North? <laughs> Atten is, as always, the fool. And the Force watches out for one such as him, I feel. As it does for the old, such as I. Hmm. Not much else, then? Mm -hmm. And you? Mm hmm I would have killed the galaxy to preserve you. I would have let the galaxy die. You are more rare than you know, and what you have taught yourself must not be allowed to die. You are not a Jedi, not truly, and it is for that that I love you. Fuck. Uh huh. I have only had this exile in my life. For ten minutes. Yeah. But if anything happens yeah. to him, I'll kill everyone <laughs> and myself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> talking about we're talking about simp lords, but Jesus Christ. Oh. Okay. And now, actually, actually, Bao. But actual. actual Bae, what do you got to say about Bao? Before all or? others. Mm -hmm. B A O. Let's go. Mm -hmm. What about him and the droids? And the droids. Mm -hmm. And the droids. Their paths are unknown to me. Even the small one who waits for you outside this place. 
I sense it has one last journey for you. You must go where Revan did, into the unknown regions, where the Sith, the true Sith, wait in the dark for the great war that comes. Okay. Small one is T3, if, if, if you're curious what she's referring to. Oh, she, she doesn't mean remote? Nope. Damn. And it's like, hey, what about Bayo? And she's like, yeah, I don't know. Even I don't know. So remember, you don't get anything. Yeah, you, you no, don't get nothing. No. He's out. He's gone. You My, get nothing. I'm, she's like, I'm looking through the code, checking restored content. Mm -hmm. Click, 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 click. Yeah, it's, mm. yeah sorry. Sorry, can't nothing. see anything. Nothing. Um, and the droids do the things. And they yep. do the things. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I definitely, like, there's a point at which I was like, when they keep talking about, like, Revan in the Unknown Regions, I'm like, that seems to be, like... Like, are you pointing... Are you setting up something that I will find out about now or never? And I'm clearly starting to feel that it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's never. But, like, this whole true Sith thing... Mm -hmm. um, feels like sequel hooks. That sequel hooks, eh? Sequel hooks that we, we shan't be receiving... Seeing as there's no three. Uh, but there is well, a Svotor. Here's the thing, though. Yeah. That's what is the next thing. This line, that line, is referencing Svotor. And Revan. It is the continuing. She came here, was here. What happened to her? It is because she remembered what lay buried here. This place, its teachings. It paved the way to Korriban, you know, the remnants here. And because Malachor, like Korriban, is on the fringes of the ancient Sith Empire, where the Sith wait for us in the dark. The real Sith. But we fought the Sith! Here we go. Have we? You thought that the corrupted remnants of the Republic, the machine spawned by technology... Here's your answer. ...have been led into battle were the Sith. Hmm. You are wrong. The Sith is a belief, and its empire, the true Sith Empire, rules elsewhere. Hmm. And Revan knew the true war is not against the Republic. It waits for us beyond the Outer Rim, and she has gone to fight it in her own way. And she left the Ebon Hawk and all its machines behind, for she knew she would not need them. And like you... She knew she must leave all loves behind as well, no matter how there we deeply go. one cares. That's what I was looking for. Okay. So, going back to talking about Disciple. Disciple figures all this out. Okay. On the ship. Okay. And then Kreia fucking uh, teleports behind you, nothing personal, kid, and wipes his memory. Ooh. Oh, she can do that. Mm hmm Goes, he, like, he figures out and goes, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck, I have to warn the Republic. And she goes, nope. Men in Black. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So, then, for all clarification purposes, uh, basically, we're being told here that uh, everyone who turned that used to be a Jedi mm -hmm. in our modern context... Yes. That ain't Sith. Nope. Everything you fought in KOTOR 1, not Sith. Everything we fought here... Not, not Sith. Sith. These red aura motherfuckers with lightsabers, including the lady we're talking to right now. Not real Sith. They, just, follow, they follow the teaching, sure, but they're not the Sith. We're not just, the real Sith. Just Dark Jedi. Mm -hmm. Real Sith are Korriban's ancients, and... Some, and, an, and apparently an empire somewhere out in the Unknown Regions. Uh, and perhaps the, um, the um, holocrons that Atris had? Yeah, probably to that too. I mean, they had to have learned this knowledge from somewhere, right? <laughs> okay. So, the Sith as a concept is gatekept, as you would. <laughs> and uh, just because you turn evil doesn't mean you're actually a part of that shit. Well, that's the thing. They probably think they're Sith. But it's like one of those like, oh, you think you're Sith? Right. Oh, right, oh, right, right. Oh, okay. Right. That's cute. Right. That's cute. Right, right, right. Oh, oh, you you know, it's like a basement king. Oh, you think you're good at Smash? Right. Oh, that's neat. Now, now, but it's but it really is a it, it's like a quality uh, st statement more more than like a hard fact. Yeah. Right. It's like you are following the teachings and using the dark side of the force. Mm -hmm. Um. 
but there's an empire that actually like exists yeah. in and of its own might. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um does the history of the actual planet and the original race like lead towards that if you if you knew about that shit prior to playing this game? That I don't know. I'm sure it's somewhere in Swotor explained by that, but uh cuz I'm basically I'm like is this the first mention of the Sith Empire existing outside the known galaxy? Or was this something that was, like, traceable to anybody who kept up on the knowledge, in a way, you know? Um, okay. So then... Yeah, besides, like, the hyperspace war, which was, like, the original war, that was, okay. the, that was the Sith, that was the first time it split when the Dark Jedi fucked off and basically showed up on the Sith planet with the race, the Sith, and then banged them and then made the Sith race yeah. slash the Sith yeah. Dark Force species thing. Okay, okay. And then they're all out there. Okay, all right. All right. And and, 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 and good old Pockets is yeah. just... Just kind of like... Out, out there waiting uh -huh. to see what's up. All right. Um, and most important question, why? Yeah. Why? Because such attachments would only bring doom to them both in the dark places where she now walks. It would have helped had she made him understand. But a hero of the Republic, no matter how brave, cannot understand war as Revan did. Why did you not follow her? Because I did not know where she had gone. If she had asked, would I have gone? I do not know. But she will need warriors, Sith and Jedi. Any who can be sent after her into the depths of space for any who know the way. Perhaps you shall go there with her and do battle at the end of all things. Instead, I remained here and now show others the way. I'm getting vibes of when I played Mass Effect and I heard about uh, the Reapers mm -hmm. for the first time. Where, like, you play the game and ultimately it's kind of like, oh, there's some bad shits coming. Yeah. And it's just like, it's we're pointing over there. Yep. You know, like, this whole thing is just about pointing at that. You don't want to fuck with that. That's just, uh, uh You know, which I'm sure, whatever. I don't know the yeah. sequels. Well, so here's the thing. You, you played the first Mass Effect to completion, right? Yeah. Okay, so, obviously, you know, Sovereign mm -hmm. is a Reaper itself, right? Uh, what was The that? ship, it's, yes. It's been a minute, so I don't, okay. I don't remember so that. So, the ship, the big tentacle-looking ship, mm -hmm. like the big creature-looking ship, mm -hmm. it's revealed in Mass Effect 1, Sovereign is a Reaper. Okay. And he's okay. basically saying, I'm the guy you're supposed to show up and open the portal. It's for everyone to come jumping through. Mm -hmm. And the Citadel is the portal. Mm -hmm. That's the quick mm -hmm. recap, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And okay. you think about you think about how... Okay, universe bugger off. Three's fine. Um, the, uh, the, like, think about how deadly one Reaper was. Was at the time. Think about how deadly one true Sith is. Right, Versus right. the people who say right. they're deadly. Okay. Now imagine... Yeah. Like yeah. imagine one of the like the, the the ancient Sith on the tombs on Korriban. Mm -hmm. Now imagine mm -hmm. there's a mm -hmm. whole fucking society mm -hmm. with those mm -hmm. over there, right? Mm -hmm. That's some real shit. So analogy on point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, she doesn't even know if she would have followed Revan. Huh. I don't. You, she hasn't even really, like, besides utter fascination, you know, and like almost like sadness at the loss of. Uh, 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 Revan, you can't, you don't really, she doesn't give you that much on, like, like, where she puts Revan compared to you, you know? Mm -hmm. It's interesting. What are the Republic? The Republic will fall, as it always has, a fall that will take millennia ah. mm -hmm. under the care of the herds of Ithor. Preach. The surface of Telos will bloom again, and its golden fields shall again harbor scientists and thinkers. And complacent and peaceful, it shall forget the time that Saul Karath orbited it and brought fire to its skies. But it shall be a home world again to others who will stretch out across the galaxy and bring life. But eventually, a millennia from now, we know which. That's that's <laughs> about how long it is from now. She's spitting. She's mm, spitting. She knows truth. what's up. She's seen it. She's absolutely seeing it. This Kraya spitting. <laughs> uh, what, what about Dantooine? What about the Jedi original ruins and that stupid idiot that still runs the hallways to this? Okay, day? Dantooine is not the homeworld of Jedi. 
Just letting you know that. Okay, excuse me. Just, just one, it, one it. of the academies yeah. located on Dantooine. Mm -hmm. Dantooine shall survive. The community you saved shall be the foundation upon which Dantooine shall be happy. They sucked, again. <laughs> but okay. They shall drive back the raiders, the Mandalorians, and all that strike at the outer rim. The Republic shall again establish their presence there and shield it with its forces. And Dantooine shall heal, be safe, and its skies free. The ruins of the Academy shall remain. Hey, we did the good things then. Mm -hmm. What about Narshada? What about after Disney takes over? Yeah, exactly. How much of this? <laughs> I cannot this... see that far. <laughs> Interesting. There is a giant oh. mouse shaped darkness. It's three spheres converging. <gasps> the true <laughs> Sith Empire was Disney! <laughs> no! I can't see beyond the mouse. What? What is it? <laughs> This lightsaber, it... It's not yours. It, this belongs to someone I... What? <laughs> can, <laughs> uh, I can't look any further. And Nar Shada. Nar Shada shall persist as it always has, but there will be a heart to the world where there was nothing before. Where once the lost and disposed were trapped there, now they will struggle and grow. From despair shall come hope. What about Onderon? What? That's a very good question. About Onderon and the Queen. Yeah. What about? What them? about all of that? Queen Talia shall have a long reign. Much good will come of it. She will, as she has, rule wisely and well. Onderon shall remain in the Republic, and the world shall prosper, though its people shall, over time, lose their customs in the ocean of the Republic and become the people of Onderon no longer. Perfect. So what you're saying is, uh, death by firing squad to the guy that was trying to escape from his cell within a week was the correct choice. Perfect. Great. See? Look at that. It all worked out. That's insane how it all just worked out. Okay. Uh, so, at risk of going plot holy a little <laughs> bit, um, Kreia's ability to see what's coming is somehow going hand in hand with her ability to try and determine a new future without the Force. And... Clearly, the Force is showing her what's going to come. Mm -hmm. So, is the logic that if she kills the Force, then the future is no longer set in stone? Yeah, I guess. That make, that's, I guess that makes so sense. So, basically, she's using um, this place to look into the future, is what she's saying. She's using the, dark, the energy yeah. of here. And the future tells her that she fails. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? The Force existing means you failed. Mm -hmm. Right? And... But... Her plan was, if this didn't work out the way that she wanted to in this way, she would then also use the uh, the same thing that happened here, and she would do it again, like the thing that happened in Malico Five, mm -hmm. and do that again, but galaxy wide. Mm -hmm. But but all the but it, just to say that like her ability to discern the future implies her failure. Therefore, if she's able to succeed and kill the Force. Mm -hmm. The, then why she would never be able to use the future to predict that because mm -hmm. it would be outside of the system that requires its existence. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Not 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 a plot hole. I'm just I'm just I'm I'm working through it because for a second I was like, wait a second. If she knew she was gonna fail, then how are we being described? Why why are we getting a descriptor of all this? But then and you're, I worked... you're assuming you're assuming the goal ultimately was that she she was go like her ultimate success to her was destroying the force and if she knows that she's bound by destiny she probably knows that there's not she's not going to be able to destroy the force yes exactly but so, she can still train you yeah who you who are not tied to destiny anymore right and basically can now are the are now the only living thing in this entire galaxy that, that has complete free will anything outside yes. of it exactly right yeah. um and also i can assume that um in a way like the only way to not follow the future she's aware of is to kill the Force, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, 
Yeah, so no, it's consistent. It's because mm -hmm. I just I had to talk it out loud to yeah 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, what about Korriban? Tell me about the Korriban. Korriban shall be as it always was, a graveyard for the darkest of the Sith lords, still whispering within their tombs. It shall always be a source of evil, spawning threats throughout the millennia. It, like Malakor, brushes the edges of the Empire that waits in the dark. And like Malakor, the Sith have forgotten it. For a time, they will remember. Revan knew this. Okay. I like that idea. I like the idea that Korriban yeah, okay. and Malakor are unknown to the Sith Empire. <laughs> hey, you know that thing that we pointed at and went, that's the Sith homeworld. That's the big bad place. Yeah, the real Sith are like, what? Who? What? Oh, the expansion team? They're out there? <laughs> oh. oh, you mean the colony? Yeah. Oh, oh. no. We're? Okay. No, okay. No, right? but, but yeah. Okay. And I'm just like, and I'm like, I'm sitting here now remembering how I felt back in KOTOR 1 when KOTOR 1 was like, this planet is the planet Korriban, the home world of the Sith. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. So... No, as we all know, the true homeworld of the Sith is Exegol, right? Indeed. Right? Yeah. That's what we know, guys. Yeah. We know that. That's where they are. What'll happen to my friends? We found out. And of my allies. What of them? I mean... Yeah, we did those already. That's the friends. Which means, Wooly, I hate to say it, but that might be it. We did it. We done done it. We may have done it. Bittersweet at the end, isn't it? Well, he's thinking. Yeah. Uh, no, she did pretty much cover everybody. Mm hmm. And we got just about as much as we're possibly going to get about Revan. Mm hmm. But she keeps mentioning following Revan as a path, which is interesting because I'm like, what are the implications of. Okay, so. Following Revan. There is supposed to be multiple endings. Okay. There is no multiple endings. Oh, uh, okay. Because okay. again, fourteen months. So you there were there were choices you were supposed to make here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well then. Rest now, old woman, and trouble me no more. <laughs> Oof. Hey. Um. Thanks. You're not gonna want to die in the force, but. You know. You know what, Kreia? So long, and thanks for all the fish. Need any company? I mean, I'm not doing anything. Besides, if I'm not around to bail you out of trouble, who knows what could happen? Shut the fuck up, Adam. All right then. Where are we going again? Shut the fuck I up, Adam. Because last time we were heading towards this. Shut the fuck the up, Adam. And there was this Sith Lord. Restore and... content. As this exchange is restore content. Fuck off. Rest in rip. Rest in rip. Greatest villain Star Wars. Hey! Ever had. They got it working. Salute. Yep. And there it goes, they should, have, they should have used quotation marks around the word planet when referring yeah. to Malachor 5. Yeah, well, don't worry. It ain't going to be there much longer. Sector Z from Star Fox! <laughs> Can we just, first before we do anything, can we just get a little bit of a... <laughs> for quite possibly what is the best Star Wars story out you there. Re they restored it. They restored it. They, 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 they did it. They did it. Because goddamn, guys. <sighs> so, Wally, I'm sure you have lots of questions. I have statements. Statement. I have statements. Statement. Who's mad? Mm. 
You got you got I'm just you got double, it? I'm double checking it before okay. I before you, you know say me. It? I'm yeah, I'm, double, yeah, I'm triple yeah, checking yeah, 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 it. Yeah, yeah, crunching the numbers. Kreia is the best Star Wars character. Period. She's literally the best Star Wars character in all of it. And I say that excluding everything that I don't know because I've never consumed that media. But in your in your current but in everything, all, all the, everything I have consumed, ever witnessed, which is the movies, which is the parts of the Clone Wars, uh, uh, some of the expanded comic books, the seven, eight, nine of the comic books, a uh, uh, couple of those video games, you uh, know, Boba not Fett book, s yeah, Boba Fett book, um, uh, I mean, you know, not Kotor one, yeah, uh, 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 um, um, some of Clone Wars, obviously, yep, Gandhi yep, yep. Wars, yep. You know, whatever. Like, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. a slightly not deep le level, but more than just the movie's understanding. Yeah, there's not a single character that even remotely holds a candle to this character. I agree. Now, that being said, at all, like, not even close. I still like Vader's design, and he's still gonna have a special place a, in my heart. He's a but, big, cool bad guy and with that's, the and that's sword. The, and that's the only reason why he <laughs> irks it out for and me, because has... I have a big-ass nostalgia boner for that dude. Oh, yeah. But number two no. for me is Kraya. On a design mecha on a design level, Darth Vader is one of the strongest antagonist, like, designs, Absolutely. because... It's so iconic, the shape of the helmet, the breathing, the silhouette is yep. the threat. But Kreia is easily the best Star Wars as character. As a person. As a character, as a person with motives. As an individual Sarah, existing. Sarah Kesselman, I, as believe this is her, I believe this is her only voice credit, by the way. This as an the only thing. Because, yeah, because she's a theater actor. Yeah. Fucking of course yeah, she is. Yeah, Um, as an individual existing in this world like you know people say too pure for this world yeah it's like literally like like too interesting for this world yeah like uh like you know the best part is uh it there's a quote i'm taking a little bit out of context but uh chris there uh, avalon is like i think i failed in making kraya a sympathetic sith that's interesting that he'd take it that way. Yeah, which is funny because I think, no, she's actually very sympathetic in that regard. Because she's trying to fucking, like, do some apocalyptic shit. Yeah. And you're kind of like, I get it, though. Yeah. You're literally like, lady, I'm right here with you, and I understand you're just going about yeah. it the wrong way. Yeah. It's, it's fucking amazing that, like, someone is such... An understandable but clearly evil villain, you know, it's and so and nice. and that's like from the moment the academy goes down the way it does. Like he says that it's funny he says that because the academy plays out in such a way where you couldn't be left with anything but oh my god, thank you, yeah, because you were not allowed to dunk on the authorities, yeah. that were clearly in the wrong, yeah. So she does it for you. And the funny thing is, she even lets it happen because the, her whole motivation is. Look, Jedi. Look, Jedi Council. Look at this thing. Look at this crazy thing. And, and like, and you're and you're con and you're condemning it. You're hating it, and you're gonna try and remove it from existence. And I'm trying to imagine what kind of a parody of a human being would be like. The Council's wisdom is to be trusted, no matter what, right? And it, it's hilarious because it's like, if you play the game the way that, like the fucking Lucas movies would have you believe a Jedi is to behave mm -hmm. according to uh, 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 Obi-Wan and Yoda and and I guess later on the entire council in the prequels mm -hmm. you're a fucking clown you're putting the clown makeup on with each member of the council you save <laughs> you go get Vrook and you put the nose on yeah you yeah, go yeah, get yeah, the yeah, other yeah, guy yeah, Cletus yeah. and you put the fucking face face paint <laughs> on and then you go get your teacher and you put the lipstick on yeah yeah and then you go to the council meeting and just go honk honk hey double applause for these boys and girls hey you edited in your own credits that's badass you edited in your own fucking credits. That's awesome. 
Yeah. Yeah. Magic. Magic. It would have been a forgotten... Like, it would have been just a bad sequel. Yeah. If not for this. And because of those... Because of these people here, like... Yeah. It's... This you 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 went from a game that had... That stumbled... Like, basically, this is the equivalent of, like, these guys made End of Evangelion. Basically. Where was, there was none. Where, where there was the where final there was episodes none. of... of of rough scripts or rough uh, rough line art because they ran out of fucking whatever. And legally, uh, Ino and Gainax's hands were tied. Yeah. So they had to, they couldn't do anything about it. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. It's wild that, like, this is the probably biggest, most impactful, like, um, change to a game mod that isn't outright creating a new genre like League of Legends or yeah. Counter-Strike. Yeah. You know? Um, uh, uh, like MOBAs or Counter-Strike. Like, like this is the biggest... It's still the same thing, but it's fixing it that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Now, none. I want to say something very interesting. If you finish this game Dark Side, you're standing here at the menu. You! Yep. Are on the main menu. If you finish this game, Dark Side, oh, you wow. are standing there as the final Sith Lord. Oh, that's pretty fucking good. Which is fucking mwah. that. Oh, oh right? that's solid. That's solid. Because yeah, you would be the Sith Lord. You are the one true Sith Lord. You're left. Yep. And that's what the title of the fucking game is. Of course. Truly. We yep. were the, the Star Sith, Wars the Star Knights Wars, of the Gold Republic, Republic to, to the Sith, Sith Lords. Lords Restored Content Modification Version 1.8.3. <laughs> oh man. Okay. So but we, we we there are no Sith Lords that we know of right now. So what? I mean what's it what's it gonna do? Load up uh, fucking my pockets model? <laughs> you know? <laughs> that so. would be good. Yeah. That would be good. Um no, I I just I can't you know, I can't harp and mince words any harder. Um, I'm I'm blown away by the singular quality of this character, and it's like it's not often that you hit something that like outshines the source material mm -hmm. it comes from. I talk about this to hey, you know what I'm gonna do. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring up Gundam Seed. Okay. And the reason why I'm going to bring up Gundam Seed and Gundam Seed Destiny is because... You mean you mean one of the few I've only watched? Yes. The reason why I'm going to bring this up is because despite the slip and slide of diarrhea that is the journey into Gundam Seed and then the drop off into a pool of feces that is Destiny... <laughs> I agree. <laughs> There is a single rope that pulls you out of this pit because falling and drowning in an endless sea of shit is a bad way to die. Would you mm, concur? I, mm, drowning alone, but drowning with your lungs filling with shit is got to be one of the worst ways. Okay. So there's a little thing that comes afterwards and and it's it's by Gundam standards it's pretty good, but compared to what it comes from it's the best shit ever, and it's called Stargazer. And it's just a really short series about a Gundam, uh, a, a mobile suit that was built as, like, basically, the that universe's equivalent of Hubble. Mm -hmm. They made Hubble, and it was a Gundam that would float and observe the universe. Interesting. And it and it's literally like we're following like rogue NASA NASA scientists trying to build. Hubble, yeah, in the Gundam Seed world, it's fucking great, right? And it's short and it's beautiful, and it's the only thing worth saving. And it's better than the entire franchise. And it's embarrassing because it's about forty-five minutes long, compared to a hundred and whatever episodes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, shout outs to uh, uh, the the manga Astray, Red Frame, and, and Blue Frame, and and, and all the uh, that stuff. That, that, that there's some fine manga stuff too, but I'm just talking about in terms of animation. So. It's one of these things where you're just like, this single piece outshines all the source material. And, like, that was probably the strongest example I had for a long time. Kreia is now fucking up there as you're better than Star Wars. Mm -hmm. You know? 
No, she's an incredibly deep and interesting character in the middle of this, what is essentially kids' fantasy space adventure with wizards and laser swords. And, like, she asks and discusses the Force and questions about the Force Mm -hmm. in a way that anybody who found that source material fascinating but kind of wanted to play along with it a little bit more, she does those things. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it's the type of shit that, like, once you get kind of tired of um, obvious protagonist versus antagonist, obvious chosen one versus evil, mm-hmm. obvious blue versus red, like, it's just, it, you, it, she offers up the kind of, the kind of conversation you want to have about what it means for the world to have a physical manifestation of your morality. Mm -hmm. Star Wars is a world where your ethics and morality manifest physically. And there's a whole lot that you can say about that. And I think that's why we go back to Star Wars as like, though it's as like as a power fantasy there's all that fun stuff in there there's all the the laser swords and all that but like on, on at the underneath it is that the rules that society lives by that we all grew up as human beings trying to um to coexist with each other by basically saying hey don't be shitty be good to people and you can probably uh, live a happier life because other people will hopefully be good to you. All the things that we have that hold us together in society. Mm-hmm. This is taking those and going like, what if the universe itself reflected, you know, those ideas and um, not to say that it judged you for them, but there were consequences for not following those rules, mm-hmm. you know, and to simply leave it at, if you do the bad things, you are punished. And that's the end of that would not make sense in a, like, larger scheme. So then we got to see how, like, well, no, you have to think about how there's granularity if an entire universe exists and there's people that uh, do bad things, but some people go worse with it, some people go better. Like, what what, what happens when you you follow these rules, but you have blind, side, blind sides to... Uh, other little things about it, right? So again, the showing us like the Jedi being wrong. It's not the first time they've been wrong. Obviously, they were mm-hmm. wrong as early as uh, Empire Strikes Back. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but this takes it to a much further extreme in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, the original Kotor sets up a lot of these themes, obviously, by giving you a character that has been through both, and you kind of have to choose how you want to play it out from there. But like the game itself. It feels like Revan and Kotor One are doing, uh, are giving you these choices and making you play this out in such a way, mainly so that you can be whatever you want to be in a Star Wars game and feel satisfied for doing it. Right? It feels like the reason why Kotor's plot played out the way it did is to make the video game make sense. Mm-hmm. The video game didn't have to have a character in it questioning literally the way the world works. And whether or not that's what's best for the world itself. Mm -hmm. Because it just wanted to offer you a video game where you could be a good guy or a bad guy. And go like, here's how the people around you react to that. This game literally questions the existence of the Star Wars world. And it's an engineering and how it functions. Mm -hmm. And proposes perhaps that maybe that should not exist. And that I find incredibly interesting. You know? What a notion. So... I, I yeah I, I'm just I'm going in circles to say the same thing. Fucking amazing. Just word salading. Yeah, it is ace. Now, when we before we started this, I did describe this as this is like the the Evangelion of the Star Wars series, like the Neon Genesis Evangelion is to mechs like like the, the same kind of in the in the mecha type thing. Would you kind of agree with that? Yeah, it's I would. A complete I can deconstruction. See, I can see it. Or it's just basically yeah. a complete deconstruction. Yeah. Of it's a deconstru- the entire... deconstruction of Star Wars. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Totally. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, people have said, uh, I haven't seen it, but I hear Madoka is a deconstruction of the Magical Girl franchise. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ava's deconstruction. Absolutely. Yep. This is your deconstruction of Star Wars. I totally see that. Um, and that's why it's funny to hear about, like, the, 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 the things where people thought that Avalon hates Star Wars and that's why he wrote this this way. And it's like, you couldn't, you can't write this unless you love it. No, he clearly, he absolutely clearly loves it. And he's just trying to be critical and interesting. I mean, it's the same way where like when you become some, when you become, love something so much, you become extra critical of it because you love it and you want to be critical of it to help improve on it and stuff. Or like, 
you're you know because there's that there's that whole thing of like oh yeah you're being too cynical you're being too you know critiquey but it's like no, no 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 i love it and like that's one thing I think it's especially prevalent with, like, uh, using Star Wars still as an example, um, the sequel trilogy, where everyone is super critical of it, super hypercritical of it because of the nature of it and because of how it was handled and stuff. And that's because there's a lot of people out there that like Star Wars that want to see it do well, want to see cool stories, and hate it when it's not told properly and not told well. Like, you have a really cool universe, really cool premise, really cool setup, lots of great stories to be had, and to just have someone who you know running the show who clearly doesn't give a fuck right we're just kind of there because it's like well we got to make a paycheck so it's just like ah, it's disheartening it's disheartening as a fan and that's why you're going to be super critical of it because you want it to succeed you want it to be the best and coolest thing that it can possibly be and and the building blocks that they were given were really fun and interesting right every mm -hmm. once in a while it's like you see a world that's created that you're like oh that's fun you can do a lot of good th with that mm -hmm. uh i mean look at the matrix Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that thing had so much like creativity oozing out of it. And then the sequels came and kind of just sealed it off for everybody. Yep. Um, but post one, pre two, people were like obsessed with writing stories that took place within the matrix and the animatrix came out of that and the philosophy of the matrix book came out of that and the, you know what i mean like there was so much to just like kind of get into that was fun and interesting well i, I wore a leather overcoat and glasses <laughs> yeah you did during junior high and high school and 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 just the mwah, just the topping that's the icing on the cake in high school i found a well not leather but pleather fedora to go with it. Woof. And I... Bark. Bark. I fucking lost it on a plane. And I think that was the universe going, leave it. <laughs> it was Let the be. past die. It was Kill it if you, you have, have to. to. It was meant to be. And my life has only gone up since then. <laughs> that fedora spawned out of world it fell through the geometry of earth it is it is a blessing fucking no clipped out yeah. visited upon you the force no clipped it absolutely, went, absolutely not nope. nope nope um okay yeah that that's my my biggest takeaway is just like what a what a fucking interesting thing mm -hmm. the exile of course being um you know interesting in and of what they represent that's that's that thing is the biggest thing is that while the exile again is another you know D, &D character where you can kind of like it's either you know it's either a neutral mask and it's a reflection of yourself and kind of like whatever you want it to be or you can role play it as whatever character you want but what the exile represents is far cooler than i think what the exile who the exile is as a person yeah definitely and yeah i and, like, you know, we're obviously waxing poetic about Kreia and how cool Kreia is, but, like, there's a lot of really good characters. So that's where I was going next. On this whole team. Atris is fascinating. Atris is a really good example. Again, you want to talk about deconstructing. Here is someone who acts at first as Jedi-like as you can imagine, but has little hints of what was that about, right? Mm -hmm. And within the context of this world, she was good enough at being a Jedi that she was on the fucking council. Mm -hmm. She wasn't just like, ah, oh, you were kind of around and you were bad at it, so then this happened. Yeah. She was on the council. Yeah. So clearly, you know, she was a good Jedi, and she sounded like a Jedi and farted like a Jedi. Mm -hmm. But when it came down to it, in that first meeting where you're going, where you're shutting her down, and the game is allowing you to do that and to interrupt her bullshit. Like, the game is already planting the seed of, like, the old dogmas and the yep. bullshit is not what life is about. And I think it's important to remember that I, at that point in the timeline, she had fallen to the dark side. But she was so self-absorbed mm. and so in her own mind that she was right that she didn't even realize it. Mm -hmm. And I like that concept, too, of basically being That's it. so right in yep. your convictions believing that you have done nothing wrong the ultimate karen yeah basically right and you don't even realize that you're gone yeah and you're in a room full of sith holocrons yelling at you yeah 
and everyone's like, what's that about? And you're like, don't worry about it. I'm doing this to preserve the Jedi, you yeah. know? Like, yeah, absolutely fucking nuts. And, and, and it's, even Kreia was like, yeah, no, she had to go. It's interesting. Like, that's why you were there. She had to go. Yeah. And, and I mean, it, like, it's interesting that I didn't see it coming earlier. Like, it was only way late down the line. And she also doesn't show up. No, we see her very right? early on in the game, and then we uh, and then we don't really talk about her or even talk anything involving her yeah. until way later. Yeah, she's the dog sitting in the room in the firehouse, the, in the house burning down, going, this is fine. This is totally fine. I, I'm a Jedi still. I'm still blue. Yep. And the, and and, the Sith holocrons are like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> and of course, the irony being, if she had had her way and started teaching the next generation of Jedi, mm -hmm. she would have just made more Sith. Because she was a Sith at that point. Mm -hmm. And would have been like, we have to change the ways of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. They're corrupted. or it's their bullshit. We're mm -hmm. going to make a new Jedi that's with blackjack and hookers. And it's mm -hmm. like, you don't even know how far you've fallen. Here's the other thing, too, right? Is like... I can see the cynical answer here being like, who represents a true Jedi in this video game, in this story? In this story. And you're like, well, fuck, there are none. They're all, all your role models are flawed. And at first you get Atris, who's, you know, clearly bad at it. And then you go meet the dude who just gave up. Yep. And you're like, well, shit, okay, you're... You're just you've you're already defeated, and you literally are like someone kill me, please. Yeah. Right. Then you get to Vrook, and you're just like, I I, I don't need to say any more about no, Vrook. No, just say Vrook, and you're done. Move on. Uh, and then you meet your teacher, and you're like, oh, you you're you're still here, right? I'm and to the point where I remember like that conversation. I remember I was all like, here we go, here we go. I'm gonna let you have it. And he's like, yeah, dude, we fucked up. It was bad. And I was like, oh. He's like, yeah. So I was like, now what do we do? And he's like, yeah, I don't know. But the Sith are still around. It's a pretty bad situation. We got to figure it out. We got to get together and figure it out. And I was like, That's oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, so you're there, right? And he's your teacher. I forgot his name. Uh, Kavar. Kavar is here and he's like, okay, this is now becoming someone that seems to be a Jedi that actually can be emblematic of the ideas and is, is you know, you're doing it. You're here. Yeah. And then you get to the council and Vrook just steamrolls and they just backseat it and they let him take over. Yep. And it goes the way it goes. So you're like, well, fuck that then. Yeah, doubling back to uh, when uh, Kreia was like, yeah, all the all the Jedi, all the all the people you trained were the lost Jedi. They were the real Jedi. They're the only – I'm like, now that line – I took a second for that yeah. line to make sense to me because this game had zero real Jedi in it. Yeah. They were all failures. Yeah. And, again, I can see someone who looks at a story that says, uh, look at all these Jedi. They fucking suck. Don't they suck? Look at them sucking. Yeah. Could be, like, a cynical take on it, you know? But it's like, no, you guys, in theory, your crew, have the pieces to actually go forward and do a good job of this. Because, at the core, you're good people. Yeah. And that's what matters more than the other nonsense that the rest of the Jedi examples in yeah. this game got caught up in. And guess what? Going forward, the Jedi, the lost Jedi that you trained, go on to reestablish the Jedi Order. As hopefully, they would. As you would hopefully not repeat the mistakes of the past, which, as we know, eventually, many, many, like many thousands of years from then, you can't stop it. It happens again, and it's almost, it's almost like, it's, it's almost like a, in the same way that the Sith always end up basically cannibalizing themselves at the yeah. end of the day. It's yeah. like the Jedi will always become too holier than thou. Hey man, it took one generation for Aang to turn into Tenzin. <laughs> that is true. It took one baby <laughs> for Aang to turn into Tenzin, dude. So yeah, of course, that's gonna happen. You get no control over that shit. But, but nonetheless, um, I want to say... Uh, Handmaiden is an interesting character to play off of Atris, of course. Mm -hmm. um, Visa, good enough, you know, interesting. Represents a parallel of you and going through what you went through. Mm -hmm. A lot of paralleling on your team, by the way, of course, yeah. with Kerria doing the same thing. Uh, Bayo. I know. Who. I know. Like, without an ending, there's so little to say. But the start of what Bayo is, one, just aesthetically, I'm like, you are a good Darth Maul <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with a laser arm. Rad. Yeah. Great. You got a robot following you. Very cool. It's just a very unique ass character. Delivery. His voice. 
soothing mm-hmm. ASMR, great the whole way through, loyal to the end, smart to a fault, and the right quality and the right traits to make a Jedi. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Great character. How would his story have played out? Um, I, I don't know, but I would like to imagine. I think here's the problem. I am super okay with the idea of Bayo dying. I, I think if he was able to come back to Malachor 5, face his gravest yeah, mistakes yeah. and things, the ghosts that haunt him, yeah. and actually help the situation in a way and do the sacrifice, so to speak. Yeah, even if he dies there... I think it would be more appropriate. It would have been beautiful. Yeah, as like a, as a full circle, like everyone go. Someone's got to stay behind it's to, to activate it. I did. This. I did this. Let me fix it. Yep, that's it. I think it. that would have been a perfect, perfect fucking ending. But obviously, doesn't go. Close that way. the loop. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, no Joseph Gordon Lovett. Just, just shut it all down. Like I really, I really would have given him that kind of conclusion. You know, it would have been best. Um, Atten, what can I say? He's he plateaued when he told us the truth. Yep. And after that, I'm like, you're good to go for the rest of the game, buddy. <laughs> I got nothing to say about Atten. You can coast for the rest of this game. Your dashing rogue yep. charms. You, you are, you are that archetype that is immediately. One of the coolest versions of that archetype, and you're d- and we're done. Yeah, you moving know? on. Just, I mean, like it's 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 not that we don't want to talk about at. It's just like at is perfect. He's like he's a he's great. perfect representation of who. Of why that are of you? Why? Why? What is? What is your reason for being a Han Solo? Okay, done. Yeah, ooh, moving oh, on. Mm, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, How do you kill a Jedi? Well, first you, yeah. yeah. Bringing back HK, giving you more than more HK than you ever could have wanted. Yeah, like. Of far, as far as, you know, returning party members go, like, HK's back, he gets all this good shit, it's lovable, it's enjoyable, it's a good time. Kando is back, mm-hmm. and he is the representation of the fucking Mandalorians! Mm-hmm. It's the coolest shit ever! It's the best! <laughs> the ultimate prestige upgrade after you get to go through the first game with these boys. And and don't forget, the, who, the character who got possibly the biggest glow-up T three, T three, T three is a nothing character in Kotor one. T mm-hmm. three is there, and if you talk to him, he goes, "You don't have much to say, do you?" Yep. And then he beeps back at him, and he go, "All right, well, just chime in whenever you have any advice." I'm your R two insert. Yeah. And now it's like, oh, I've been around. I've seen some shit. I'm the only real connection you have to Revan. I've got memories of what went down. And I have not been wiped in a long time, so I've developed a personality. Yeah, you know, um, what are you gonna say? He got the he got a fucking great glow up. Mm-hmm. Goto. I oh hold on. I dub I dub the Darth T three. I am knighting you. There you as go. We go as he should have. See, look, lightsaber is blue. Ain't no Sith Lord here. <laughs> Moving on. Goto is someone who waltzes in and I go, what the fuck is this ugly thing? And then his backstory is like, well, that is interesting too. Yeah. Um, he represents someone on the party that like is is just as interested in balance for the complete opposite reasons of force users. Mm-hmm. You know? Bringing balance to the to to life, to world, to the republic, to everything. But for not even remotely a force-based reason, entirely for economic reasons, yeah. is an interesting play on the idea of bringing balance to things. Bring balance yeah. to the money. Yeah. Bring I, balance again, to I, the I, pockets. I also love the idea of an AI that's been tasked with a goal that can't complete the task within the, uh, the current constraints or in the current laws of the Republic and therefore has to either break the law – or not complete its programming, yeah. which I think is a very interesting concept on its own. And the fact that it took me, fuck, a decade before mm-hmm. I really understood, because I never finished Goto's plotline until mm-hmm. the 2010s, because I never cared, because I was like, whatever, I don't really care about Goto. He's mm-hmm. just some dude. He's just some capitalist dude. Why do I care? And right. I realized after, I was like, oh, no, there was more. Mm-hmm. There was mm-hmm. much more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you know that's that's all good, and I mean, uh, you know, beyond that, like that's it. Just, just the fucking a class act party, really good fun times hanging out with them. Um, 
you know, shame I couldn't uh, find out more about Hanhar. But you know what? I think I saw what I needed to. He's a, he's a mad yep. Wookiee. Yep. So that's what it was. And that's the party. And Disciple, if Disciple goes on to basically help teach, then if he's in your party, he goes on to help set yeah. up the new Jedi Order, basically. Uh, I, I feel like Visas could have had uh, a little bit of... Well, no, 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 no. She wrapped up, she wrapped up with Nihilus. No, she wrapped up with Nihilus. It's yep. true. It's true. She was she was fine with that. Handmaiden gets her nice moment with her sisters as well. Yep. Which she needed. Yeah. You know, like that. As a closure type thing. She needed yep. that for sure. Um, you can imagine her going on to sort of just like, yeah, be this eclectic weirdo that is like really fucking good at combat, but barely understands how people work, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but that's it. But all in all, yeah. Handmaiden good. Visa good. Party good. Party good. Party good. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. All right. I have a hilarious statement to say to you. So Pockets, Fanny, and T3 walk into a bar. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Now, T3 already on his own being there, I feel like, would be able to uh, be able to maybe communicate and, 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 and get between things. I don't know. I don't know where the loyalties lie, though. And I had the same thing with Kraya and shit. I'm like, where do the loyalties lie? For everyone that's like, oh, man, Revan's the best. You're OK, too, though, Exile. Like, I'm like, OK, but if we were both standing in a room, where would you where would you go? Mm-hmm. You know, if we were like if you were the puppy. And then we both stood on different sides. Who would you come to when we called you? I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. I can tell you for sure that uh, uh, that HK would like fucking Sonic Spin Dash over to Revan. <laughs> <laughs> HK would step on your corpse <laughs> to Dante slide over to Revan faster. <laughs> HK would run over to you, kill you, and then use you as a skateboard to get over to Revan's side. <laughs> oh, that's you know good. what I mean? That's, that's good. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. Um. Uh, okay, so uh, I guess you know. Yeah. So what I should do then is like, I'll stop this and I'll grab the the thing. Slow tours. Yes. We did it, boys and girls. We did it. Oh, before we uh, before we um, uh, jump into the videos, I just want to also I'll, I'll quickly say once we start recording is uh, what happens at the council on the dark side because I think that's very important right, to the plot right, line. Right, right, right. So, like, yeah, I do have summary videos of content missed. Uh, thanks to Azuna, I have stuff from the alternate playthroughs and exactly Dark Side and whatnot. But unfortunately, that's it's three hours long. Yeah, so that'll be that'll be a watch I, that in the. I'm going to just do that on my own time. Um, I definitely think the Swotor. Uh, we're going to do the Swotor stuff. Oh, are fucking. Well, I mean, I don't think it's hyperbole to say that the chat, the probably the best thing about the game. I would honestly, if there was a Star Wars movie. Of those, of those, uh, of those cutscenes, I would watch that movie super fucking hard because I actually I showed it to uh, again my fiance who's not the biggest Star Wars fan, but she, I showed her the openings like the the movies we're gonna watch here, and she was like, "Can we get more of that? Mm. That's great. Can we get some Star? Can we get some of that shit? I love that." And I'm like, "And the game is doesn't quite live up to that hype, unfortunately." I would like to st- now. To be fair, before I before I say that, uh, some of this is the game running in the background. But I would like to say the playtime because I can currently see it in front of us right now for Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic to the Sith Lords. The total playtime so far <laughs> on this game is one hundred and twenty four hours. But that's not accurate. No, it's not accurate. This is absolutely not accurate. This is from but leaving I it just, on. I just I love it. <laughs> I fucking love it because I don't think I've even put that many hours yeah. into multiple playthroughs on the Steam version. Yeah. I think I don't know if the save files have uh have an actual in game count. Uh, they might. I think they do because I think the in game count was like ninety five the last time I saw okay. it. Okay. Also that was um 
41 out of 57 Steam achievements. So we actually nailed almost all of them in one playthrough. That is, that's pretty all right. Which I say I would say is honestly pretty, like, yeah, that's kind of where we are percentage-wise of how much we nailed in this game. I forgot. Yeah, we're checking the time, I and, uh, and Wooly reloaded it, and he's and he's uh, he's he's loading it up. The loading boss is, is... the loading roaming boss has shown up. We just okay. want to see the 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 complete total time of the end of the game. But I think I think it's just gonna come just shy of a hundred hours, which uh, you know, it's a respectable. Time in this game yeah. for this twenty to hey, thirty hour RPG. I've spent po I've I've spent I've spent like uh, longer in Persona. Oh yeah, well Persona is yeah. also like fucking so, huge by comparison. Yeah. Um. Uh, no. Why Speaking of which, P four is on uh, Steam now. You can get it yeah. on Steam. Is it worth it? I've never played it. The Golden, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Um. It's you know. Like, P5 is incredible, but uh, P4G was, like... I think it's P4G, specifically. Excuse me. Yeah, P4G. What did I say? I don't know what I said. But P4, yeah. yeah. Persona 4 The Golden is incredible. Okay. It was, it's the reason why Persona, like, as, yeah, blew as, up to the levels that it's at. As, so. I, as I mentioned earlier in the start of this, I uh, have now joined the PC Master Race, and uh, I am currently working through and downloading some things that I have missed, which is great, because that means I'm getting a bunch of great classics for pennies on the dollar because they are not $80 Canadian because they're a brand new game. Hell yeah. Okay, well KOTOR just crashed. <laughs> so we will... It's like, no! No more, you're done! We will... No more! <laughs> we will leave it at that, you know? Um, someone can grab one of the replays of the save and then go take a look <laughs> if you wanted to, to see the exact uh, game length at that, but uh, leave it be. Let it be. Let also, it be. I can now be. F I am now free of my Sithly duties. You are now no longer Sith Lord. Darth V is no more. You Hold can up. just. You can be. You can go back to being James now. Uh, so. And a little little action for the camera. Oh yeah, go. Oh, damn it, it's too big. I can't do the. There we go. Right. So what? And then yeah, what I'll be doing is uh, I'll be personally going through uh, the dark side uh, of the game summary, Hanhar, um, end game content, the full con the full context of every of, of the other runs that we missed. Exactly. Exactly. Just for the full experience. Yeah, I want to know. I want to know. Because here's the thing: in a perfect world where Wooly wasn't let's playing this, he would fin he would finish his first playthrough and went, "Holy fuck, this is amazing!" And then start up another playthrough. But, you know, because of the streaming nature of it, I'm not I, about to do that again. Yeah, I want to know how... So, like, I'm like, somehow a dark side exile must disappoint Kreia even harder, and I can't even imagine well, or figure he, out why. It does. <laughs> yeah, it I does. know, I know. So hard! <laughs> know. It's so good! I'm like, I'm like, that's the thing, is like, I'm like, I can feel in my bones, I'm like, something about being a dark side version of the exile probably really bugs her oh she so, hates it it's yeah, the yeah, best yeah, yeah. okay I'm, I'm down to figure it out uh <laughs> oh what a fucking interesting character that you and you have you have to write writing a character that's multi-dimensional because you can choose to go opposite ways with it yeah and still having them be compelling that's the fucking challenge dude mm -hmm. like writing for video games man yep Writing for games with multiple paths and making sure that they're still satisfying? Multiple paths and also writing and thinking about how creative the human mind can be when it comes to solutions to problems. Right. Right? And that's right. the big thing because I feel like with a lot of Star Wars stuff especially, you can get away with putting most of your attention on the light side quote unquote run because obviously you're playing Star Wars. You want to be a Jedi. You want to do the good guy stuff. You want to see that stuff, right? But like... Writing specifically for, like, the evil outcomes and all stuff like that is very interesting as well, too. Just because it's, like, it's not natural to most people to be like, fuck it, I'm gonna go do all the evil decisions. And in fin I find, especially with some more modern RPGs, you're almost punished for the evil solution, uh, evil stuff. And it's, uh, 
yeah, it's nice to see a game that really the writing is so strong that it takes account into all these interesting. I mean, like it happened throughout the whole Let's Play where you would say something and then you would look up and the exact thing you said was one of your replies is one of the replies listed in the game. And you're exactly. like, and I'm like, well, what do you mean by that? Exactly. And then like the reply is literally there. What the fuck do you mean by like, you know, hold up. Yeah. And it's yeah, yeah, the fact yeah, that yeah. it factors in those things is really cool. 